Hi, I'm Alan, and this is Prayers to the Dice Gods. Uh, ever wonder how you can make cloaks look just that little bit more interesting? For this one, I've chosen the Malignant Plague Caster because I love the model, but it's very, very busy. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to look at when you're examining the model, and I wanted something that will make it easy to pick him out on the battlefield and just make him slightly more interesting. His face is so obscured. I've gone for a bit of a wet blend, um, and my vision is to have a galaxy scape, like he's drawing his powers from the warp through space so let's see how that goes because it really didn't go that well to start with the entire cloak is painted in Xerius purple from citadel to start with this is the base coat this is the actual color that we want and then we're going to try and blend that purple out into our electric blue from vallejo and then at the other end we're going to go for our blend into pink from vallejo when it comes to wet blending, I find you need a little bit of practice just to get into the groove of getting it done. Um, so I struggle usually when I start out. As you can see, it's not going that well. It's not blending the way I want it to. I'm completely forgetting everything I've learned about wet blending. And I just keep slapping paint on the model. And that's fine. We'll keep going back and forth, back and forth, attempting to get that blend in the way we want it. Now, I'm trying to do this without having to employ other blending techniques like layering or glazing. But of course, it's a wet blend. It will never be perfect, no matter how many times I go back and forth with it. There'll always be a slight gradient there that you can see. So we're going to try and blend this. These paints haven't been thinned. They're straight out of the pot. I'll put them straight onto my palette and then I'm putting them onto the model. Now thicker paint seems to work a lot better for mixing when you're doing a wet blend rather than trying to thin them down. There's no bleed cause there. So that's what we're aiming at. So first off, we're going to put the electric blue on and then I'm going to put a, another coat of our Xerius purple. And the idea here is to try and mix that line there and get it so it goes a nice blend going up from the purple into the blue now of course I haven't done any wet blending a little while it did not go well to start with but did that matter not even slightly this is wet blending this is painting it's not always going to go right and doesn't have to go right the first time uh, if you watch any of the really good painters they'll tell you that you just keep practicing just keep doing it over and over again when I first learned to wet blend, the technique I was taught was to use your brush and make little swirls along the edge of the gradient that you want to create. I've completely forgotten this at this point. I'm not even trying to do that. I'm trying to do these lines straight across the uh, model because there's another technique that I've learned and I'm doing it completely wrong. I'm just using my paintbrush in the wrong way here. So after five minutes of back and forth with the blue and the purple, trying to get them to mix together nicely so that they kind of go as a gradient instead of just a straight change from purple to blue, I'm finally starting to use some of those techniques, such as the little swirls along that edge to try and mix those paints. When you learn this wet blend, you learn quite quick that these paints don't all behave the same. So here, where I've got the blue and the purple to mix, um, once I've started using the, the right technique for blending them, I move over to the pink. The pink does not blend or cover in the same way as the blue. So I really start to struggle to try and mix those two together and get that into a gradient that I think is even remotely close to what I've envisioned. So I've switched back over to the blue because I don't think that the blue is as bright as I want it to be. I want that to be good and solid as it hits the tip. So I'm going over that with the electric blue again. And I'm trying to do a little bit of feathering just to try and help that gradation between the blue and the purple. It still didn't work quite the way I wanted it to.
So then I realised in order to uh, strengthen that gradation from the purple to the blue, I'm going to have to do at least some amount of glazing. So I start off mixing a nice thin glaze of blue and trying to get that to smoothen out. Now I'll switch back to the pink. I'm basically doing some dirty blending here and that's where I'm leaving the paint on the brush. So I've put a bit of purple on, tried to mix it with the pink and then gone back to the pink without washing the brush. And I'm doing that on purpose because I find that as I'm blending sometimes it makes it easier to, to use the edge of the brush where the other paint is to help mix them together. Yes, you did just see that. I thought I'd be clever and do a quick loaded brush over the top in an effort to strengthen that blend. And I did it very wrong. I overloaded the brush with paint and destroyed all of the work that I'd already done. So on to a different technique. We'll get the blue loaded back onto the cloak and then we're gonna get the purple and basically rub the brush as fast as we can across the middle to mix those two paints together. It's finally beginning to work. I'm finally getting the blend the way I wanted it to. Whereas if I'd just done these slightly different techniques at the beginning, then this would have been a bit faster. But again, that's not the biggest deal here. I'm using both. So I'm rubbing the brush across really quick. I'm then going in and I'm doing little swirls to help do that mix. It's finally going the way I want it to go. And I'm getting the kind of blend from the purple to the blue that I was really looking for. I'm still struggling to get that pink to blend with the purple in the way I want it to, but I'm not gonna let that stop me. I will keep trying until I get it how I want it to look. Now I've decided that I've mixed all three colours into a glaze and that's basically just thinning them until they barely show as a paint and I'm going to go back and forth between these colours until I get these blends smooth over the way I want them. But I'm going to go over with the pink. So back and forth just between the colours, putting a bit onto the blue and then a bit onto the pink when they're dry, switching to the purple, just trying to get these blends as smooth as I possibly can without having to sit here for weeks. Now after much back and forth between the colors, trying to get this nice and smooth, I've decided that's as far as I want to take it. So now I've mixed some of our electric blue just with some pure white paint and started doing some edge highlights on the cloak as well as the holes that are in the cloak. But all I'm looking to do is to highlight the bottom edge of those holes to try and reinforce the 3D look. So I'm just going to keep adding white to the electric blue until I get down to pretty much just pure white. And the idea here is to unify that across all three of the colours here. So the pink, the purple and the blue will all have a final highlight of white where necessary. So that it's kind of unified all the way down. Now the purple, when you start adding white to it, turns into pink. So I've just gone and highlighted it with the pink that I was already using. It's already on the palette, nice and easy. And then I'll add white to that until I get to the highlight that I want. So 
So I'm starting out with a glaze of the electric blue with some white in it to create what will, well, what will hopefully look like the trail end of a meteorite going through space. No space would be complete without some twinkly stars. Now these are pretty simple, I just put some yellow dots in and then put in some lighter yellow dots and a little white spot and then I put a cross onto each of those yellow stop dots to make it look like a star. So after 40 minutes of playing with some blends and then adding in some fake stars and a trail of an asteroid, just little extra bits of texture here and there really completed the look of this. I now have the beginnings of a very nice looking malignant plague caster who has everything I want him to have. I can spot him on the table because I don't know about you, I am horrendous for remembering to use psychic powers, particularly if the model blends in. Well, to remember that these guys have got psychic powers at all and so I forget them mid-game but now he's going to stand out, I can spot him on the table, I remember that will trigger my memory to cast a spell. Like a lot of techniques, a lot of painters are afraid of trying new things because they think they're really difficult, particularly if you're watching a very skilled painter pull off one of these techniques, because you'll watch them and you'll think they've just done that and they did it in one try, they got it looking like a really nice blend. But even they will tell you that that isn't how it works. You will need to go in with your wet blend so it helps you map out where you want those highlights to be and 99% of the time they will go in and they will glaze over the top to make sure that that blend is as smooth as possible. So these are all techniques that you can learn to do. It takes a bit of practice is all. It's not actually that difficult. Now, if you're going for a tabletop standard, the glazing side of things isn't always necessary. You can learn that at a later time. So just work on making a blend that looks the way you think it should with a bit of wet blending. And then when you're ready to take that to the next level, try some glazing over the top. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you get all of the notifications as and when the new videos are released. The Dice Gods favour the Painted Army.